Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jason. Today I am testing out this Kodiak Canvas truck bed tent here. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you're probably wondering why I switched out a rooftop tent for this. That is not necessarily the case. I am going to be testing out a bunch of different setups for you guys. I ultimately decided I think that's the best way to use my channel in a helpful way for you guys. I used to have a Toyota 4Runner and I recently went to a 2018 Tundra TRD off-road SR5, whatever. It's in the six and a half foot bed, so I have a lot more usable space back there in the bed. So this tent does work for a five and a half foot bed. So if you have a five and a half foot bed, you know, the crew max cab or whatever the cab is called for your make, um, this one will work for a lot of different sizes. So just a few minutes ago, I was reading the literature online and if you have the five and a half foot bed, it will fit over your tailgate. So my bed is a six foot, seven inch bed. So I think this fits up to six foot, eight inch if you don't have it over the tailgate. But it is really cool that you can turn a five foot, five bed into a sleepable space. You know, I'm just a little under six foot. So, um, you know, obviously I can't sleep in a five and a half foot bed. It doesn't really make any sense. With that being said, let's go ahead and show you how to set this up. It's actually pretty easy. Um, if you're used to a rooftop tent, it is a little bit more daunting, but if you're used to a ground tent, it is very, very similar. Um, it uses a like rib system, I guess, where there are three different poles on there. Um, it's kind of like a covered wagon. Actually, it's very similar to a covered wagon. All right, guys, so like I said, this is the Kodiak Canvas truck tent. It's made for either a five and a half foot or a six and a half, just covers over the bed, whereas some of them kind of go in to the bed. You know, some of them will go in like that. And the reason I don't like that is because if any, you know, rain gets in there or anything like that, I'd rather have the truck bed covered and then use all of that space inside. I originally got this because I just got this Tundra about two weeks before Overland Expo Mountain West. And I had had a rooftop tent set up. Everything was really comfortable on my 4Runner. But I needed to try something out and I could have gone ground tent, but I wanted to test this out because I had seen a ton about it online. I have the back awning set up here. I don't have the front one set up. I just... Um, I just don't care about that, honestly. You can set that up if you want. I just don't care about doing it. But yeah, it fits on there very nice. Um, I was originally worried when I was looking online about these scraping up against the paint. As far as I can tell, there's nothing like that. Um, the plastic parts are on the front and uh, all of the straps are on this side. So I'm not really worried about that. This is made of 100% cotton duck canvas, uh, very strong material. However, you really do need to dry this out after you go on a trip. I would just lay it out. Um, I did that before I even left as well. So these three tubes that are on the inside here are made of three quarter inch uh, steel tube. So they are very strong, very sturdy. They are made to withstand pretty good wind. I've had them in some pretty high wind gusts and been fine. I've seen videos of people online in the snow, but on their website, it does say this is not designed for heavy snow. Um, I don't see what would cause it to not be doing that because it is shaped very nicely for snow. You know, it, it could roll off the sides here and that is a very strong uh, tube there but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with what the manufacturer said and uh, say this is not for heavy snow use. So another thing I look for in tents is YKK zippers. I really don't like anything else if possible, just because um, I've had some pretty bad issues with zippers. And at this point, I really just trust YKK. If you know of another brand that's pretty good that I should be looking at, let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, maybe I'm missing out. All right, guys, so we have a storm that way and a storm that just passed us. We are right in the middle of it. I am gonna try to get through this as quickly as possible. So what I went ahead and did is unfolded everything, let it sit out. Typically, I would wait till the frame and the structure is up 
but uh, we went ahead and put it in. So we're gonna start off with these bed rails. There's two of them and they are gonna go on this right here and on that side right there. Um, you will position these in different spots depending on whether you have the five foot bed or the six and a half foot bed. So because I have the bed rails on mine, I had to upgrade and get a little bit larger ones. If you have the bed rails on the side, like that right there, you can see those two uh, points on the bed rails. If you have that, you will use these. Um, I just went and bought these, I think at Lowe's maybe, or Home Depot. Funny enough, they're the same color as the ones that came with the uh, tent. These will tuck underneath the rail and I'll see if I can catch that on my phone, um, how this is gonna be. Now a really important thing to remember is that this on this side needs to go up underneath. You should feel and make sure that it is touching the top of the bed. So it should be like right here, right here. And then you're gonna be tightening that down. If it's catching on this rail, that's not how you do it right. I like to push this all the way down this way or all the way down this way so it's not out and I bump into it. And then I'm just gonna tighten it down more. So next you're gonna take these and uh, open them up like that. Should be a loop. It's gonna go in here as well as the other side over there. If it has this kind of end to it, that's gonna be your awning. So you're looking for the ones that don't have this when you're doing the frame. So to put this in here, we're gonna step in through this little part down here and that's where we're gonna push it up. So you can see there, we've got one, we got one more in the middle, and then one there at the end, and uh, we'll be all set up. Well guys, in my haste, I put this on inside out. Super easy fix though. Um, it is starting to rain. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this right side in and then we'll go back inside real quick. So one of the things that I'm gonna do straight away is get all this lined up and then I'm gonna start tucking this back behind the bed here. So it goes in between there. So if rain comes down, it goes in between the bed, over the sides and over on the back. All right, so the next step is to get all of these here lined up all the way across so that everything lines up. You're gonna go ahead and take these things here like this, and they're just gonna catch underneath of the uh, bed there. I'm gonna go ahead and put it down here on the bumper for this middle one and I went up here with this one. So after you get it, you're gonna tighten this down. The beauty of owning your own stuff is that you can do it however you want. So I like it this way so that I can actually utilize this um, tailgate here, but I have the six and a half foot bed so I can sleep without the uh, tailgate part, which goes all the way in here I can sleep without that over the tailgate and I can use this surface to uh, to prepare food or anything like that. If you have the five and a half foot bed, you're for sure gonna have to put this over unless you're like 5'1 or something. So we'll have enough space to tighten this one down. These little ends here 
are going to go into these grommets. But underneath here, there's gonna be a little place to slide this in. So on here and on the other side, there's a place for this here to slide through. And then you'll just attach it to the grommet and um, then your awning will be up. You can see there's a grommet back there. Then this all the way through to this grommet right here. And uh, I think I called this an awning before, but this is a, um, a rain fly. You're just gonna tighten those up afterwards. And uh, you're gonna do the back one. Now, I personally don't care about doing that. So for me, I went the entire expo without this um, done there. It doesn't need to be done. This is the interior here. You've got your window on this side, window on this side, and then you've got your entrance there. You can also unzip this, um, or if you unzip this part right here, you can actually reach through to your uh, window back there. I have tons of space in here, I can reach here. So I actually have about five feet of height here, so I can't stand up in it. I have to like kind of lurch over, but um, yeah, five feet of height is pretty crazy. I have like six and a half feet, maybe a little bit more because it sticks out past it. So I probably have about six foot and um, maybe like 10 inches after that. So pretty close to actually almost seven feet. But yeah, tons of space in here. I'm about to hunker down for this storm. What an incredible amount of space in here. It is wild so i wanted to talk about some of the pros and the cons to this i think the obvious pro is the amount of space that you get in here i mean it is massive in here five foot i believe from the bed up to the top and unlike other tents where they kind of coat the bottom there this just goes over it so you get the entirety of the bed it's fairly easy to set up compared to some other, you know, ground tents or some uh, some other of these kind of tents, the truck bed tents. So as it's getting colder here, um, that is another benefit to this one is that it is made of a high quality uh, canvas material. You know, some of the other ones are that really like thin, very see-through material. Now I've camped even warm nights in some of that thinner material and it is pretty awful. So having the canvas is definitely a big bonus. So it did burn pretty hard. Everything inside is dry. Another big bonus for this tent. So some of the cons. Now I'm used to doing the rooftop tent thing. So for me, the setup is way, way more complex than a rooftop tent because with a rooftop tent, you really just pull like two pins and it just opens up. So we're comparing apples to oranges. They're really not even close. I would compare this more closely related to a ground tent in terms of the time it takes to set it up. Now it did take me a little bit longer and I was focusing on avoiding the storm, trying to film and trying to set it up at the same time, which wasn't the best. But I can assure you it's a lot easier when you're doing it uh, either by yourself or with another person, as long as you're not filming. So the next con is also kind of a pro. This sits somewhere in between a ground tent and a rooftop tent in terms of price. Now I have a North Face tent that is a ground tent and it is pretty much about the same price as this. But I know that most people, when they're looking for a tent, they're probably looking somewhere in the 100 to $300 range. So pretty much every form I looked at online was pointing people in the direction of this. And I definitely see why, because I have seen the quality of some of the cheaper ones, and this is just leaps and bounds above it. So it is kind of like a rooftop tent in that you are off the ground, um, you're in the bed of your truck. So, you know, you're not have to worry about, um, you know, critters on the ground as much. Yeah, it's certainly not a rooftop tent in terms of cost, but I want to appreciate you guys stopping by and checking this out. I'll see you guys in the next video.